who's wrong and who's wronger. In this corner, followed by Millions James, the exploding unicorn, break well. And in that corner, ignored by Millions, Steve Dash, Rinko Lieber. All right. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. I've got a little bit of static on the line here, and uh, his name is James Breakwell. How are you doing, James? I love how you always thank the applause. You assume they're clapping for us and not at us. Like, there's, there's such a thing as hostile applause, and I think we're to that point. So we have drawn aggressive applause from people. Is that what you're saying? Yes, I think I think we should be offended. I really do. All right. Well, James is a guy who's never met a pig he didn't like. So I imagine that draws the ire from other people. And that's what you heard. They were casting applause toward us. It, it is. You should you should duck and cover. That's that's gonna be my new thing. I'm just gonna cower everything I every time I hear applause, which is not that often. Not that often at all. Well, you have joined Wrong and Wronger, and it might be by a happy accident that you're here, but it is the two of us, James the Exploding Unicorn Breakwell and me, Steve Olivas, Dr. Steve, and each week we debate topics that other people find senseless and inane, but secretly harbor a very strong opinion about. And James just set the table for us on the front end here. What is it we're going to be taking on today? We're going to do one that nearly destroyed my high school. It tore us <laughs> apart. It was like a civil war, brother against brother. On a topic I didn't even realize was controversial, but it is. Is when do you rinse your toothbrush under the water? Do you rinse off those bristles before you put the toothpaste on or after you put the toothpaste on? This is seriously what we're going to talk about today? This is absolutely what we're going to talk about. And I bet you right now we're already on opposite sides of the issue. In fact, I guarantee you we're probably on opposite sides of the issue, even without the coin flip. Because no matter what, like, you seem to always find the wrong side of things. I can't imagine there's a side B to this single that we've got. There is, but I, we'll let the coin decide. But first, but first, before I just I tear you down to nothingness, <laughs> let's, get, let's get our nice things out of the way, just so I can get that disgusting taste out of my mouth. That's and get true. Back to we <laughs> we do say a nice thing about each other, and uh, tearing me down to nothingness. My kids are one step ahead of you already, but <laughs> that's good. I'm glad they're doing the Lord's work. <laughs> I, you know, every time I have a full seven days to think of something, seven days, that's a lot of hours in there. I'm not going to do the math of how many hours, but it's a substantial number. And I still struggle, but I got one this week. I got one. I went All back right. through your Wikipedia page and I found something. I didn't realize that early on in your career, you did some work in children's TV as yeah. a stand-in yeah. for, a, for a character who you're almost an exact body double well. of. Yeah, it was on Sesame Street. You were the stand-in. For Oscar the Grouch, and I had no idea. I was actually the back end of Snuffleupagus for a while, too. <laughs> wow. I'm surprised you didn't see that on my IMDb. But <laughs> yeah, Oscar the Grouch, while physically he's, uh, I had to lose some weight to play that role. <laughs> but uh, at least personality trait wise, he and I have all the charming attributes of a vampire bat, and so I was able to just step right into character, and it wasn't much of a stretch for me, I gotta tell you. It sort of hit me right in stride, James. It wasn't even just the resemblance, it was the smell, it was the hygiene. You had the whole package. You're not good at many things, but you nailed that. I went full hobo for that role, and I usually walk, just my walking around hobo is about three quarter hobo, but I took it to the top. <laughs> That's that's good. It's always good to see you go to the full extent of your abilities. I'm glad you weren't holding back. <laughs> well, James, uh, if you don't mind, I discovered something about you, too, as I was scraping the underbelly, the barnacles from the underbelly of the Internet. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but I found out that you were once offered 50 grand to pose naked for an issue of Werewolf Quarterly. Yeah, they, they had all this money, and I was like, this, I, yes, absolutely, yes, I'm going to sell out. <laughs> and then I found out it's not even a real magazine. Like, I don't know who was offering that money. I don't know if it was real money or what, but that was a close call because uh, the, the world should be grateful there is no such thing as that magazine because <laughs> I was, without hesitation, going to take the money. You were disappointed you couldn't wear your blue shirt. 
Uh, yeah, you know what? That, that that is my superpower. That shirt, but you know, I've got a second shirt of hair underneath it, and it's. Uh, <laughs> I, I would not have been cold. They would not have. They would not have need to turn up the heat. I would have been okay. Well, that, all right. Ah, and by the way, if you sell out, you know, you and I we're done because I can't handle sitting across <laughs> the table from a sellout. From somebody who actually makes money at this, we, we, we all know you're a long way from that. Someday, someday, someone's going to make me pay me for this. They'll be like, your podcast is producing money. Who do I make the check out to? I'll be like, me, James Breakwell. Only me. That's how it's going to go. Because Steve Olivas does not sell out. You heard it right here on air, folks. All the money goes here. I'm not sure I... I'm not sure I'm in a position of power from a negotiation standpoint right now, so we're going to have to rethink this. All right, I will flip. Now, remind the, the listener, because we, we did go far afield there, what are the two sides of this insane argument? It, you mean perfectly logical argument. Again, it's when you run the water over the toothbrush. Do you run it over the bristles before there's toothpaste on and then, you know, to soften them up and then add toothpaste on top of it? Or do you add water after you add the toothpaste to kind of soften the whole package and get it ready for the brushing experience? Wow. All right. All These right. There's serious dental hygiene concerns here. There's a lot at stake. Uh, well, and it, 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 it will be decided by the Guam quarter of fate. It and will uh, be. Heads will be before, and this is determining James Breakwell's position on the topic. Heads is before, and tails is after. All right, here we go. Quarter fade is up. Oop, it hit the computer and landed heads. So you actually have before that you run the water prior to adding the toothpaste. And I'm glad, because once upon in my life, I, I did not run the water before. I ran it after and I was mistaken, and my life was worse for it, because if you put the toothpaste on and then run the water, you wash some of the toothpaste off. You, you lessen the experience. But if you run the water on the bristles before you add the toothpaste, they are softened up, they are pliable. You add the toothpaste, and then you, you brush to your full extent, you avoid gum disease, and you don't turn off. Uh, you turn out like, you know, Steve Olivas over there doubling for Oscar the Grouch. You actually keep your teeth. So this is what you want to shoot for in life. You want to wash the brush before you add the toothpaste. It just makes sense. I don't even know how you could argue otherwise. Well, I'm glad that I got tails on this one, or that you got heads more appropriately, because there is only one proper side of the argument, and that is that you run the water after you put on the toothpaste. What that will do is it will embed the toothpaste down into those bristles a bit, and that makes the toothpaste cling to the toothbrush more when you're brushing. And furthermore, and I know how wasteful you tend to be, so this is going to fall on deaf ears, but sometimes you don't even have to run the water. If you run it afterwards, once in a while you can say to yourself, you know what, I'm going to save Mother Nature just a little bit of H2O here, and I'm just going to go right into the mouth and use the saliva to lubricate all of that uh, toothpaste all over the mouth, and then when I spit, then I can add a little water to rinse and spit one more time. So it can save just uh, one little toot of water on the front end every time over the course of a lifetime, and the Atlantic Ocean will remain filled. I find it amazing that yeah. 30 seconds into this debate, you've yeah. already abandoned your position. The two positions were, do you add water before you add toothpaste or yeah. after you add toothpaste? And you have, you have gone so far back, you said, I don't add water at all, or I add water when I'm completely done brushing and just rinsing off, because you couldn't even defend oh, James. washing off after the stage where you have the toothpaste on there. And it's okay. You're just, you're a human being with a conscience. And for once in your life, you've sided with the good and admitted that you have no valid argument. And I applaud you for that because you really do have to wash off beforehand. If you're, if you're rinsing off once you add the toothpaste, I mean, you're flushing money down the sink. I know sinks don't flush, but go with the analogy. You're, you're rinsing money down the sink. I mean, in my house, we go and we squeeze every ounce of toothpaste out of that that toothpaste roll. You uh, you will be will be executed on site by my wife if you ever throw away a toothpaste roll that has not had every single micro you know molecule of toothpaste squeezed out because you gotta save that stuff. And here you are just washing it down the sink willy nilly. Why would you do that? There is no chance that'll wash down the sink. And James, I can tell you're from the video game generation that has about a .7 second attention span. That's not at all what I said. It that, is exactly what that she is said. Not, I'm sorry I, s- I have listening skills. I have headphones <laughs> on and can hear every word. 
I know you're so used to not being listened to. You forget I can hear you, but I can. I right, listen. And sometimes I listen by accident. You are two knuckles deep into a Grand Theft Auto game while we're doing this podcast. So I, I said, don't you know how video games work. If you're sticking your knuck- knuckles up anything, you're doing I, it. No, very- no, oh my God! What the? Hell? Why did this get directional all of a sudden? I said two knuckles deep. Knuckles Imagine deep. you, you your have your quote. icy talons of death gripped around that PlayStation remote, and so it bends at the second knuckle. Is that, is that well, how do you take from that, that two you... knuckles up something? What? Where do you go you're with two this? Two knuckles deep. Where you? Those were your exact words. I that t- is a quote. <laughs> Father O'Malley is crying right now because your catechism has just been burned in effigy. I don't know what video games you've been playing, and I don't <laughs> want to know. This used to be a rated G podcast, and you got on here. This is about toothpaste, Steve. Stop knuckling things, please. You want you want to sell out, and yet Howard Hughes, not Howard Hughes, Howard, ah, shoot, who's the guy that just died from Playboy? The window of timing just slammed shut on my fingers for Hugh that Hefner? show. Hugh Hefner. You're supposed to be, you're supposed to be our pop culture reference. <laughs> Reference person, man, you're just so discombobulated I by your knuckle analogy. That do you're, you're not off. live in the erotic city, salacious world of James Breakwell. I live a world that is pure as the driven snow, and so I don't understand half of the things that you say because I'm going to heaven when I die. That's what Father O'Malley just telegraphed will, me. And you will die sooner because of your improper brushing. We can agree on that much. When I die, the world will still have water left in it, and when you die, you hope that the glaciers melt so we still have something to drink. That's what your generation is thinking to How themselves. do you think water works? Do you think you use it once and it's destroyed? Do you have some sort of, like, it's, it's just like a new clear explosion after you brush and those atoms are vaporized <laughs> because when i use water it goes down through the drain and out into the drainage system and eventually it evaporates up and comes back as rain <laughs> it's this whole water cycle you should try it it's amazing see but you don't know you're assuming you're a creative writing major like you know nothing about physics and whether matter is either created or destroyed the point of it is that Fresh water is a commodity, and if what I said, let me get back to the point. Let me bring you out of your Grand Theft <laughs> Auto disaster. About. <laughs> <laughs> well, because the argument is just, it's spurious, it's specious in the first place. You look both of those up, I think I used at least one of them right. Now, what I said was that if you run it after you put the toothpaste on, sometimes you might not even put the water. Not that I don't put the water on, but that you have the option of saying to yourself, maybe I won't use water tonight. If you put it on before to soften the bristles, you are 100% water committed. Do you, do you sometimes skip the toothpaste too? Maybe the toothbrush as well? It's just, it's just airbrush? Like, you're just cutting out critical components of this process. It's very simple. You need a toothbrush, you need toothpaste, and you need water. You and don't here you need are water. And you're moving it out. How many dentists approve of this approach? How you, many dentists? You do this not need water. Your mouth has natural water in it. Why are we arguing this when this isn't even the point? I just feel like you've exposed yourself. Only one of us in this room has been to a dentist in the last two years, and it was not you. (laughs) So now you're calling out that I've exposed myself, and yet you don't want me to mention that I'm wearing underpants and mucklucks right now in honor of winter. (laughs) And you you accuse me of being the vile one here. I'm oh. not being Mr. vile. Mr. No Pants, two knuckles <laughs> deep over there in the corner. <laughs> Did this you is, just call me Mr. Fister? I want to scream like for a confessional where I just can't <laughs> see you. I just hear your horrible voice. I... And that will keep me safe. Oh. My security, I think this is what has to happen. All right. Uh, the Holy Spirit is going to appear in a dream to me tonight and will... <laughs> Curse the name James Breakwell and ever the moment you know, that I what? met no, him. I'm going to back off because you're horrible breath because you apparently don't know. <laughs> He's going to say everybody runs the water afterwards because there's only two possible choices then. Either, as James himself alluded to in the introduction, the entire package is softened, or you use no water and you save the planet. You're not using any less water. The same amount of water is used. You're just applying it at different times. No, but what? one way, you're wasting toothpaste. Like, toothpaste is soft already. Why would you need to soften up toothpaste? Do you Why get, did you like, say it, part, then? Do you get dehydrated toothpaste Let and you have God. to, like, add water? Is this astronaut toothpaste? I will. My toothpaste is soft. <laughs> But the bristles, <laughs> when they're dry, the need water to be softened up. 
Uh, so let me feed that back to you. Why did you say it early in the show then? Because I was presenting both sides of the argument. Because that's what this podcast is. One wrong position and one wronger position. <laughs> so I gave you the wronger position so you would understand what it was. Oh, mission like, accomplished. Is this, is this what we're going to do every time, every week? It's like, well, you, you said two positions in the introduction. How can you name both positions? Because that's the point of the podcast. Why are you here, Steve? You know, my role seems to be to explain to the sane and rational listeners what it is that you're talking about. Because I speak fluent unicorn. I don't know that anyone else does. I, I, it's not a language. The language I speak is English, and it's coming through loud and clear. Oh. Put the water on to soften the bristles. I mean, do your bristles stay soft on their own? <laughs> See, is that a you're thing? Getting like, personal. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you own a toothbrush. That's what the conclusion I've come to here. You seem confused on how this entire process works. If I go and check uh. the medicine cabinet right now, there will not be any toothpaste in there. I know it. There will be I, toothpaste that can stand on its own two feet. It doesn't have to take any kind of prep work in order to be functional. But that's, that's the point the I'm argument. making. The argument is does it need water before or afterwards? And you're going with waterless toothpaste again. You keep wandering into this third position that was not given as an option. I'm saying the second position is ideal because it can go in two directions. You can either... Put it on afterwards, which does ostensibly the same thing that putting it on before does. Or you even have the choice of not using water at all. You commit to the water. That's my only point. You're so confused. But again, I'm going to come back. I'm not going to let this bristle thing go. Does your toothbrush over the course of a day or the 12 hours between morning and night brushings, does it not dry out? No. Well, yes, it gets dry, but it doesn't dry out. The implication there is that the bristles stiffen. If you get soft bristles, they don't stiffen. Toothbrush technology has caught up with the world, James Breakwell. <laughs> <laughs> they can make bristles that the stay soft. It's a natural lubricant. It makes it softer. It eases the experience. You don't have friction in there. I mean, even if you do brush it all, there has to be so much friction. You're going to start something on fire in your mouth, and it'll probably make the world a better place but you know what for your safety i'm looking out for you cut down on the friction add the water then the toothpaste then everything is properly lubricated and you won't you won't hurt yourself i mean you're gonna die in a toothbrush accident one of these days i'm gonna say i told you so i'm not even gonna cry at your funeral this is your warning this is your chance to turn your life around real men Real men have gums that can withstand the pounding of a toothbrush that is labeled as soft in the first place (laughs) <laughs> I will stand on principle with that one. I'll defend that mountain. Maybe maybe that's the problem. Maybe you're just getting such weak, flimsy toothbrushes to start with, and it doesn't even <laughs> matter to you. But I get a toothbrush that can deliver some brushing, that can actually do its job, and that toothbrush needs a little bit of help. It needs some water, and then the well, toothpaste added. That's the word on the street with regard to James Bray. It needs a little help. And uh, you, James, get all the help you need. I am able to <laughs> function as an independent solo man. Yes, I, I think you do function most of your life solo, which explains why you have so much trouble when there's two people on this podcast. Which is be- the human or interaction bewilders you, and that's okay. It's, I don't want to spook you. I feel like you're a deer coming out of the woods, and if I hit you with too much logic too fast, you'll just bolt into traffic. <laughs> Uh, we got to end this thing because I, oh. I'm i not even sure you understand what the point that I'm trying to make is, and it's not for lack of my ability to communicate. <laughs> I'm sorry that I tried to save your teeth. When you were, when you were using dentures <laughs> a year and a half down the road, your dentist is just going to say, I listened to your podcast. You were warned. All right, I'm also, s- I, need, I need the name of your dentist so I can pitch this podcast to him. So we're going to up our listener <laughs> count by one. Wow, that'll go from four to five. That's pretty big. That's pretty impressive. That's a 25% jump. All right, tell us what you think, America and the world. Actually, we have a lot of Canadian listeners, too. I don't know if you've looked at the stats. I guess we can't say America, and we can't diss Canada anymore. But uh, get in touch with us on social media. James Breakwell is all over the place. His footprint is bigger than Sasquatch, and uh, so is his. Anyway, James Breakwell can be found on Twitter at Exploding Unicorn, and that is without the E, and he is found on Facebook at Exploding Unicorn with the E. I'm at Steve Olivas, spelled just like it sounds, O-L-I-V-A-S. It's what the girls started yelling at me in middle school. Oh, leave us alone. James, we're going to come back next week, and it's against all of my better judgment, but what are we possibly going to argue about? I have no idea. 
Well, I, I don't know. How, how does this work? Like, do we just show up and then come up with a topic on the fly? It almost seems like that. It's kind of scary. But yet the topics are so important that can't possibly be the case. <laughs> Surely we put hours of research into this. <laughs> well, and you can tell the crack research comes shining through with our argument. <laughs> Until next week, this is Steve Olivas for James Breakwell saying thanks for listening, everybody. Have a good week.